Messi. Oh, what a goal oh, that is! Welcome back, folks, to the Bola Bola Show podcast. And on today's episode is basically the second part of our 10th anniversary of the 2010 EFS Suzuki Cup. Obviously, we all, you heard what happened in the, our first episode. You know for the fact that you know Malaysia had to go through a little bit of uh, you know a little bit of rough and tumble journey just to make it out of the group stage. But here we are now in the semi-final. But before we get into further discussion with my two co-host buddies, I'm going to ask Carl this one important question, like. How confident he was going into the semi-final after the fact that Malaysia managed to pull himself out of the group stage? Um, yeah, uh, against Vietnam. Uh, obviously, I think everyone uh, wanted Singapore. <laughs> mm-hmm. uh, <laughs> wanted Singapore, but uh, we got Vietnam, uh, which is which is also in a, in a, in a way uh, a, a replay of the 2009 uh, Sea Games, lah. Despite being past different squads, like and mm-hmm. and, the, and the youth teams and. But I think the home, the the advantage was playing at Bukit Jalil first leg, you know, because uh, if I'm not mistaken, please, if anyone listening, uh, please correct me if I'm wrong. Um, I rem- I recall Hari- uh, Harimau, Mal- Harimau Malaya uh, played a sparring game. Uh, I'm not sure against which uh, state teams, but they had a game uh, in between the, uh, the, the, the group stage and the semi-final and also the semi-final and the final. So that could have contributed to the match sharpness of of the players, you know. Uh-huh. So if, because it was quite a bit of a long long gap, you know. Because like our last game was uh, our group last group stage game was December seven, and uh, the knockout games on the fifteen. So uh, there was uh, again, like, correct me if I'm wrong. Um, the uh, if I'm mistaken, there was in fact a sparring game against a state team. Uh, apa? so that could have contributed to the match sharpness of the of the players, you know, from mm. from 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 the strikers to the goalkeeper. Mm. So uh, that could have contributed heavily to the two zero victory at home, uh, nonetheless. Yeah, but 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 thank goodness no injuries happened during that sparring game. Also, if it did occur, man. Yeah, uh, I don't think I don't I don't think so because yeah. like, I do believe that uh, regardless of who dropped or who got injured, obviously mm. like, like if we were to put uh, suspect number one, kalau ada orang injured, that we, that we would like all of us collectively pray, hmm. would be Safi Sali lah. Safi Sali, uh, Ashari, yeah. and, and, and Ashari, and Ashari Samsudin. So, those two players are the one yang are, we're getting, getting as the goals. But again, we have to think about it, we have to reflect about it. Uh, the, defend, the defenders did, did really well back then. So, mm-hmm. um, and also, yeah, uh, that year uh, really showed, uh, apa? Uh, Carol Fami chased much. Uh, it, it was a re- revelation year for him, lah. Because like, yeah, Sharbini started the first game. Uh, did uh, did all right, but yeah, he let in five goals. So he had, had uh, the coach had uh, the staff had to respond it uh, mm-hmm. with uh, with with uh, Apek and um, and if I'm again uh, again because this was ten years ago, we have to recall back a lot of memories. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Faiza Marilas was the number one. Uh, for coach Rajagopal, uh, but if I'm mistaken, he was injured prior leading up to to uh, to the 2010 AFF Cup. Uh, mm-hmm. But back to your point in terms of injury, apa semua tu, number one, yes, correct. Thank- <laughs> thankfully, like uh, Safi Sali uh, didn't get injured. Uh, yeah. That in that in that game, but again, it could have con- again. I do feel that it could have contributed. Uh, having a sparring game could have contributed a lot of uh, mental and emotional sharpness. Uh, because if we look at back at the results of the both of the two legs uh, mm-hmm. of the Sea Games, uh, about Sea Games like the AFF Cup, yeah, you know Malaysia won two zero uh, mm-hmm. against uh, Vietnam, and then we drew against them away at yeah. Vietnam zero zero. We didn't concede any goal at that point of time, uh, leading up to the first leg of the of the final. So, mm-hmm. you know, having those spar sparring matches, uh, real uh, again lah. Uh, I'm saying like, oh, it's it, it's true, it's true, it's true. But again, if anyone wants to dispute this claim, please dispute it. <laughs> but <laughs> again, I vaguely recall it. I vaguely recall there, there was because I remember reading in the papers. It's just that I, I'm also trying to find it in the internet phone. Uh, ada kata kat Wikipedia. But you know, you're trying to even dig even more for verified uh-huh. sources. So far, you know, tak, tak, ada, tak, ada, tak, ada, tak ada gambar. So, 
you know, I, I'm currently still finding it as we speak. Mm. But um, if anyone did remember a newspaper cutting of, of that, please share it on social media or whatever. But uh, again, I do feel that contributed to us uh, winning uh, 2-0 uh, at home soil. And of course, uh, I think uh, having, having, having Bukit Jalil uh, the first tier filled up and also the second tier somewhat uh, filled up yeah, really helped out as well, the motivations of the players. Uh, to to push on lah, and also I think it's nice when you, uh, to be honest, I'm I'm a I'm a big big fan of um, you know if my team were to play home first in a two way le- uh, two in a two two leg match, uh, I think that 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 uh, that contributes more demands more focus to to deliver lah. So 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 what you're trying to say is it's more uh, advantageous if you play yeah. the home leg first. At, at home soil. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I do, I do feel that uh, mm-hmm. on, on a personal level. Uh, because, uh, you know, if you, you, know, you, you, you do your best at home, yeah. uh, you, you show the fans and everyone in the team that you're committed to the cause, you're committed mm-hmm. to great history, you know, mm-hmm. you are sent off. You are sent off with very, a lot of goodwill. Uh, goodwill to succeed. So mm-hmm. and that showed uh, in the nil nil uh, draw against Vietnam. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm. So in case uh, those are listening in our podcast, if you will be able to tell us that two very mystifying friendly games that took place yes. between the semi final and the final, you know, mm. please share with us. Let us know what who, uh, against whom did we play and where was it. Yeah. yeah. Us, uh, Anyone you know, from the National Archive, Archive Negara, ke mana mana? Yes. Yeah. 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 <laughs> I've been, I've been, because again, uh, I was, I was at college and I remember reading it. In the, uh, I was reading. I remember reading it at the halls and hmm. and and I, I don't. I try to recall whether it was the Star or New Straits Sense or the Sun or even the Malay Mail. I'm, I'm again like it was. Again, I, I may be putting my reputation on the line of Pusimo too, but, uh, you know, it's, um, like, it's, it's one of those things that you spot and, that, and you consider yourself and say, huh, did, did that ha- was that the contributing factor? But uh, let's just say if it didn't happen, um, it, it shows how, you know, how Coach Azugopal and his staff were fantastic like, in, the, in the preparations and preparations mm-hmm. and preparations. Uh, because I remember uh, back in 2017, I got the opportunity to uh, moderate a uh, coach himself during the Selangor Football Day uh, function by uh, Selangor Youth Community and Pransang Selangor uh-huh. in uh, Damansara Performing Arts Centre. I remember asking coach about the question about, you know, when Malaysia was facing, uh, oh, Malaysia was facing uh, Manchester United in the, in the, in the friendly, uh-huh. uh, the first game where Amir Raya scored two goals. And I remember coach saying, again, this was three years ago, so I can, my memory is a bit better. Lah. Uh. Um, I remember coach saying that in the preparation, in the lead up to that game, and uh, keep in mind, coach Adopal only took over around that time, which is July uh, 2009. Uh-huh. So uh, he, I remember him saying that uh, in the training round, they, uh, they, they, they practice and they practice and they practice, and, they, they, and he did remind the place to chip over the keeper because they were uh, to chip over the respective uh, keepers uh, because they are usually coming out to get the balls in uh, to get the balls from receiving the balls from the defenders so they are always outside of their uh, line lah uh, mm. so hence how I, I mean, uh, you know uh, scored the two goals lah mm. Mm. so when 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 because around that time I was I was uh, in the th- I was doing a lot of theatre workshops and. I remember talking to uh, theatre coaches and uh, directors and Pusimo too. The key of making a very good actor also goes for a good professional player is const- constant practice and practice and practice. You know, I'm, I'm sounding a bit like Alan Iverson uh, <laughs> back in the 2000s saying practice, practice, practice. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, but, but, but to like it, 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 it shows for itself. You know, the practice does contribute a lot to uh, the game, uh, to the preparation and towards the game lah. So there you heard it from Carl. And of course, guys, you know, going to the semi-final, I mean, after you coming out from that situation that what we put ourselves through in the group stage, I guess you can say that maybe there's a bit of, uh, you know, there's a little bit of confidence in the air within the Malaysia team camp going to this game because I don't, to me, I think when you, once you make it out of the knockout stage, you know, past form is irrelevant. I mean, no matter how, I mean, no matter how uh, tough your opponent can be, but you know, it's it's a knockout game, you see. So I, I, I mean, anything is possible. I mean, what's your take on this? 
Well, I feel that uh, I think Malaysia had the advantage of because of being runners up mm-hmm. to the second leg as a host. Mm-hmm. I think uh, that would be a great advantage to kick off the campaign, uh, knowing yeah. that uh, they may be in a bid with the crowd support, mm-hmm. hoping for uh, luck in the second return, uh, maybe even a bit defensive, so they might keep the what do you call the make pacemaker. So mm-hmm. yeah, I think it's a very good advantage. But uh, having to say that they're meeting in Vietnam, the defending champion, I think is also not an easy game. Mm-hmm. And it's not even easy. Just uh, I think not even hard. I think it's a tough game even to think about it. Yeah, Kelvin. Yeah, actually, I find this a bit strange that uh, the winner of the group doesn't actually play the first the first leg, right? Mm-hmm. Because I, I I think playing the first leg uh, at home is an advan- it, it brings more advantage, like you ask me, like, Because if you can get it done, get it done in the first leg, you will bring less pressure back home. And uh, for for in this game, you know, this is exactly what happened here. You know, Vietnam. Coming in with the form, you know, being the defending champions and all that, um, you know, they, they 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 were they were in control in this game, but but you know, uh, goalkeeping mistakes uh, contributed to you know finally guys, you know, Safi finally broke his duck, man. Box. That's another header, and it's a goal. Incredible. The young Malaysian team. They've answered the calls of the nation. The fans are ecstatic. It is 1-0 to Malaysia. Yeah, the, 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 the time finally came. People are wondering, you know, when when is this guy going to score? You know, he, he had his hand in assisting some of the goals, but man, you know, that, 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 that first goal, that header, I mean, you can call it lady luck or what, he went through the goalkeeper's hands and, you know, and then the I second mean, one as well. Yeah. I mean, you think about it, you know, where he, there was a time for him to make his mark. It has to be now. It's now or never. Yeah. This is the moment because you know we needed badly this win before we head over to uh, I mean to Hanoi, correct, right? Yeah, yeah. yes, yeah. correct, yeah. correct, Simon. I, I think he not only broke ducks, I think many chickens, eggs, and also Vietnam. <laughs> because I think the goal, I think I think to be fair to Vietnam, I think they were better team in uh, in at least in this league. Mm-hmm. And I think I don't know what 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 transpired. Yeah, what uh, for them not be scoring? Perhaps I think that's it. Mm-hmm. A miracle but, this game. But 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 what but how do you guys feel after this game? Like like you know, after winning winning 2 0 in the first leg, what what sort of confidence you had there? Well, I, for me, I thought you know we at least uh, you know 50% of the job is done. I think at least, at least we got one big foot in the final, that's for sure. Yeah. Yeah, but but of course, you know, then the sec- going going to Vietnam, the second leg, that's a different whole story together. Mm. But but before we get there further, I think it's also important to note to take note that uh, maybe perhaps the game plan was to let Vietnam let Vietnam come forward first. And you know, because as you you have to remember, even as much as you're dominating the game, but if you're not scoring, it will frustrate you. In, in time to come, you know, it, it, it will get the, I mean, it gets into you. You know, you, you start to have this, uh, you know, that mental focus and all yeah. that, you know, start exactly, to go haywire. Yes. Because you're trying to do everything right, but you're not scoring goals. And this is where Malaysia capitalized on it. And Yeah, it, and, 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 and Malaysia did well by not conceding an away goal. I think that's really important yeah, here yeah. because being in the two-leg, uh, two-leg mm-hmm. uh, aggregated, uh, you know, away goal rules final and all this. So, to keep a clean sheet at home is, you know, that, 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 that's why, you know, as uh, at the beginning, I found this a bit strange being a group winner and not actually hosting the first leg. Yeah. And then usually this, uh, what do you call that? This, uh, even Champions League also, mm. after the group phase, usually the champions play at home, this, uh, second leg. Mm-hmm. Is it? Yeah, yeah, it's a common, it's a common. Usually the champion group, only after that, only they, they make a second draw, a second leg. But after the first phase, uh, after the group, mm. they don't, to, yeah. But to be frank, even they play at home, they play like lions, you know, Vietnam. <laughs> so mm. I'm very surprised of this results of even inside the board like that. How come they actually lost? Because for you know, of course the home side we support Malaysia, but in the, in the neutral point of view, I think it will still be a mystery why Vietnam failed to capture the opportunity. And mm-hmm. t- talking about the second goal, I think it's uh, important to take note of uh, Safi's reaction. Yep. To that situation because uh, it was a very close 50 50 call. If you look at it, it could have been offside, it could have been not. He managed to beat the offside trap and you know take advan- full advantage out of the situation and put the ball in the net. 
And I think uh, you can see from his celebration, you know, he like he badly needed it. He needed that moment to really sort of like, you know, take all, uh, I mean, take all the monkey off his back. Yeah, yeah and, 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 and indeed what, what the monkey got off his back in this game. Mm-hmm. Because, you know, leading the line and, and, you know, and finally, finally coming to the semi-final and actually scoring, scoring your first goal. And well, guys, there's more to come from Shafi. Yep, yep. But before that, we still have one more unfinished business yet, which is the second leg in Hanoi. Roger taking a second look at his watch. And there it is, the final whistle. Malaysia have beaten Vietnam two goals to nil in the semi-final first leg of the AFF Suzuki Cup. Okay, guys, and now you know this brings us to the second second leg of the semi-final where Vietnam, uh, you know, really need to make a comeback here and catch up on their two goals that they conceded in the first game. Uh, so playing at home in uh, for, for for Malaysia, I think uh, overall, what what do you guys think? For for me, I think they they played a pretty solid game where they actually limited Vietnam to. To having shots outside the box, even though Vietnam totally dominated the game, but Malaysia, but Malaysia really pushed them uh, quite far behind the line where those guys were just shooting from outside the box. Mm-hmm. Yep, agree, agree. I think that the centre back pairing of uh, Muslim Aman and Farli Sas were just was just uh, you know it was like a wall, like a solid wall they managed to build around that, and mm-hmm. I, I could see you know the the, the Vietnamese team. I mean, they, they were, they, I can see they're getting frustrated as time goes by because you know they were not they are unable to get a good shot on target, unable to really you know shaken up the entire Malaysian defense and unable to really you know have a crack at it. You know, it was almost like they're just trying their luck shooting from all angles from outside the box. Mm. And I, I guess you know whatever Coach uh, Dato Rajan Gopal's uh, strategy was on that night, which is to limit and soak the pressure and limit every single Vietnam uh, attack sort of paid off, I guess. I think it was a very, very disciplined performance, if you ask me. A very well, solid, di- disciplined performance. Yeah, and also I think uh, Vietnam, I think, totally uh, went all out. I think they also had a loss of uh, injury of the two player in the first leg, uh, namely on the uh, Viet Con Chung and Tam Yi, and who returned the second leg, where I think they cannot last more than 10 minutes because... I think, uh, I think too much of uh, injury and I think psychologically, mentally, and despite that, they gave good performance. And uh, I think the defense of Malaysia made the difference. Of the, mm. ah, yes. mm. and, and another thing to note also, guys, is uh, this was the game where it was the return of the yellow Malaysian jersey again. Because mm. if you realize the, the first game, the first game we played in yellow and it was a disaster. Mm-hmm. And then after that, we never wore this jersey, and then we actually wore it back again for the second leg. And this is the last we'll see of the jersey, in fact, in mm. this is tournament. Nice. At least. Yep. Yeah. Oh, okay. yeah. Okay. Interesting. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. And, and and of course, you know, let's let's uh, not uh, ignore the fact that you know when you're going to Hanoi at that time of the year, we're talking about December. Mm-hmm. How freaking cold it could be! I mean, I, I can tell you from my own experience. I went to North Thailand in uh, February, February mm. last year. Mm-hmm. Hey, hey, sorry, sorry, January last year, mm-hmm. man, you can see smoke coming from my mouth. And, um, and I try to mm-hmm. imagine myself, you know, if I was in these player's shoes, you know, playing in front of a, a very, uh, not to say a hostile crowd, but a very intense atmosphere and trying to defend, you know, that two goal lead, you know, with all, putting their life on the line. I think it's, uh, it's a, you know, you got to salute their, their effort, I guess. Mm. It's not easy actually to be in that condition at first. And, and, and so overall, yeah, Malaysia really held the sport, held the sport well, and you know really made it to the final. And um, and even you very aptly you mentioned put their lives on the line. Well, that will really come into place when we go into the next segment. Oh, absolutely, absolutely. Because uh, you know, one thing's for sure, guys. You know this result putting Malaysia into the final. I'm not sure when it's the last time we played the final. Probably in '96, the first edition when we lost to Thailand. Mm-hmm. It sort of galvanized the whole country. I mean, basically, you could see that uh, the fans really came back. The fans came back. Not, not. I mean, I mean, we'll talk about it uh, more in in the in the next episode. Yeah. But 
just before we start the next episode, we thought maybe we want to ask from our counterpart in Indonesia, Anthony, mm-hmm. about you know how confident were the Indonesian team going into this game because now they know they're going to meet Malaysia in the final. And let's not forget, you know, they did beat us five one in the opening group game. So let's let's hear it from from his thought. What was going on in their side first? Yeah, Jasuri and Mr. Kim Sangwoo blows for full time. Disappointment all round for players and spectators alike here at Abidin. But the Malaysians have done their job. Malaysia 0 0 on the night here at Abidin. But the first leg display at Bukit Jalil was enough to propel them to a final spot here in the 2010 AFF Suzuki Cup. All right. Um, again, with the final, um, you'd have the mass hysteria going on amongst people who didn't really follow football, but you know, it was a chance for them to wave their flags. Then you had the people who kind of took an interest in football anyway and had, were, had their own doubts. Um, I think in the wake of that Malaysia of the Malaysia game, uh, Indonesia beats Laos six 0 and then they were they struggled. They beat Thailand two one, and after that, things kind of slowed up for them. Um, they struggled to beat the Philippines in the semi-final. They beat them 2-0 on aggregate, one, one nil in each game. But they made hard work of that. And I felt that that was where maybe the Indonesia really were at. Um, I think they got lucky in the first two games. You know, they, they had fates on their side. But they, they, were, you know, they were punching above their weight, if you like. And once we got to the final, I was convinced that, you know, Malaysia had beaten Vietnam. And I was very impressed with the Malaysia in the semi-final, in their semi-final ties again a good Vietnam team. So I, I went over to KL for the final with about 17,000 Indonesian fans and me. And, but I was not confident that Indonesia would do it. Um, a couple of reasons. First, of course, home ground has such a, plays such a role in Southeast Asian football. You know, the teams don't often win away from home. But also there was this thing about, it was interesting reading the media and the comments from the players in the, in the camp in Indonesia. And they were, and you got the impression that they were less focused on the game itself and more focused on lasers. I don't know if you remember the lasers that have been seen at some games sometimes and catching players in the eye. And you, you read a lot of stories about how Indonesia were threatening to walk off if, they, if their game was interrupted by lasers and laser moves from the fans. And that, for me, that kind of like said that Indonesia had already waving the white flag and saying, we're not, you know, not going to win this. So let's try and find another way out of it. So I was very disappointed by that. Um, and in the, Malaysia dominated that first leg in, in KL, obviously, and thoroughly deserved the win. But again, there was a lack of fight. I think you know the, Malay, the Indonesian team wasn't really playing with that much passion or fight. I didn't think at the time, and I think that um, they started to show some passion and fight once the play play was stopped for the alleged laser di- laser distraction. So you know, I was like, my impression for the game was. Were they really that focused on it? Were they hoping something would happen so that they could walk off and get, have an excuse like that? It wasn't really... Um, and even though in, Malaysia had lost 5-1 five, five, in the first game, I was still convinced that Malaysia had a better team than Indonesia, a better all-round team. Um, Indonesia was starting to see that Okta Manyani, for example, was a world beater, when perhaps he really wasn't. Um, they were relying on the ageing legs of Gonzalez as well. Whereas I think Malaysia had a much more youthful team and a much more, they're much more of a team. They're much more disciplined. They're much more compact and um, they played to a plan. Um, I think Alfred Reader did what he could, but I think that there were times when, you know, things are taken out of the manager's hand. And here we are, guys, you know, we are here now and we've made it to the final, final against Indonesia, another derby in Nusantara. And after what, what happened in that first that first ever game in this uh, in the opening game in this tournament? This definitely this was definitely a game that you know really pumped up. It's got a lot. It got basically a lot of Malaysians pumped up for this game, you know. And you know this this being on Boxing Day, a day after Christmas, and you know really looking looking forward forward to this to this final. And uh, in fact, Stephen, what what happened? Maybe you want to take our listeners through what what happened? What what did we do on on that day? Okay, but okay. But before I share about our story, let's, yeah. you know, throughout our whole lives, we basically, you know, Boxing Day has always been a tradition in England, right? Yes. Whereby, you know, they, they go to watch football the day after Christmas, if I'm not mistaken. So, it looks like, you know, we get to experience it on our 
in our own backyard. What is what is the feeling like of going to a Boxing Day football game? Yeah. But of course, and you know, for us, it's far bigger than it's just it's it's a. It's not it's not unboxing presents anymore. Yeah. You know, yeah, it's yeah. really this is really like a boxing match. You know, yeah. Like. yeah. <laughs> you know, I re- I remember that the week going into that this first leg final because a, a colleague of mine she, you know, she does a lot of trading textile trading and all that. So she actually went to Surabaya. You know, she was a couple of days there. She spent there to go and buy things and all that. And she came back and she was telling me, you know, the the euphoria in Indonesia going into this final. You know, the, the, the media, the expectation, the hype and all that. And I'm thinking like, oh man, this is uh, this is huge. And for us, you know, we we guys, I remember we went to have a futsal session in the evening. Mm-hmm. I can't remember what's that futsal mm-hmm. court name, but I, I know it's in, Parang, it's in Parang Jawa in front of JPJ. And then later on there, we went to have a glass of teh tare in a restaurant Al Bidaya in Sri Andalas. And I remember telling you guys, you know, I really have a good feeling like, you know, we're going we're gonna to pull something out of this this game. And I just had a good feeling because I, I just felt that, you know, the momentum we build up from that Vietnam game, you know, it's just going to be spilled over over here. But, you know, guys, I mean, what's your, what's your thought going to this? Uh, for me, basically, I think Malaysia once again had the advantage of uh, playing the first leg at home. Mm-hmm. So I think uh, that would be another key factor, I think, on the uh, thing. But then, uh, like, uh, when they really do it in Vietnam, so Indonesia might bring a different perspective after they've been uh, smashed in the uh, in Indonesia. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, but it was a good win. And uh, I think Malaysia took the opportunities well and they moved very fast. Mm-hmm. And, and and if you guys also remember, this was the laser pointer game, right? <laughs> yeah. So, so so I mean I mean do, 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 do you do you think that could have really made an impact? I mean to 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 to, to the game because it I mean right after that incident, uh, you know, Shafi Shafi scored. Oh, what a real yeah, mistake there and a chance here. No, Sarol pulls it back and it's a simple tap in. It's all come from the mix up with the lasers. And you can see Hamka trying to run the ball out of play. But Mohamed Safi becomes the hero of the hour. Well, just a break. Taking his toll here, in my opinion. Players, like I said, they calm down, they cool down a bit. And in the process, Hamka just gave the ball away. But Malaysia seem to be defending in sixes and seven, and all of a sudden they've got the lead here. Well, you know, I think uh, if we were, I mean, if, if we were listening to Anthony's perspective, I think you know he may have a point that the players, the Indonesian players, sort of like you know let the thing get into them. Mm-hmm. I think it's important to remember that you know in football, I mean, especially back in those days, whenever you go playing, you know, in in a in a away game, sometimes sometimes a very hostile environment. You know, like remember, like when Peter Schmeichel was threatened by, I think Galatasaray fans or Fenerbahce fans or something like that, they threatened him with his life, but he still mm-hmm. refused to allow that to get into himself. He still went out there and played and you know performed for Manchester United. So I think you know in a way that you know it, it's a it's a it's a shame that Indonesia allow this situation get into them and you know we i i can't i don't i can't say that whether it's right or wrong but we we capitalize on it and we took opportunity and, and that's about it you know we it was two wonderfully taken goals you know that get, really gave us a momentum in this final yeah and also talking about fans i think uh if you ask me fans around the world uh, i think having the same passion and uh, same spirit, like you're comparing Peter Schumacher and Galatasaray, right? I think that's a mentality I think the players have to also develop. Mm-hmm. Game, I think they was keep on blaming on the laser. I remember once even in Milan, in uh, uh, Inter versus AC Milan, where the where Dida was thrown with the, uh, what do you call the flare, the flare. Yeah. And then he still got up, he could his body, but he still continued playing. And I think this, that part, I think, I think especially in uh, our region, I think need to improve on the mentality side. But by fans, it's fans. They need to get a job done, and as as what they should actually. But 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 you know Malaysia uh, really capitalized as what Steven yeah. said in a, yeah. in eleven eleven minutes spell. You know we ran away with three unanswered goals, mm-hmm. yeah. and uh, you know credit goes to of course uh, you know Safi for for begging you know begging another couple of goals there. But yes. I would also give kudos to Matyo. Who was it was if 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 you look at what he did, it was his persistence on the right hand side. That you know he chased every ball and he and he 
never gave up and he basically set up uh, something for his goals mm-hmm. yep i mean uh, i i i can remember much of like pretty, pretty much you know like a unstoppable locomotive on that right side yeah, yeah. basically going after every single ball and not every letting day. one i can practically see every indonesian guys on the left side were practically uncomfortable throughout the whole game because you yeah. know they, they, he was he was really in their face all the time he was chasing all the lost causes and everything and he just he just you know it was having a go at them on the right hand side of the field mm. and, and, and it was his and it was his you know again his workaholic attitude that contributed yes. even the second goal mm-hmm. like, yeah. i mean ashari yeah. what a, what a what a powerful shot man that was one heck of a goal skill there and a wonderful effort with them from mohamed safi and as it was coming in on the edge of the box was the substitute asari well indonesia have gone to pot there's no question about that malaysia now look as though they're on top yeah unstoppable mm. then also indonesia for us yeah yep yeah even indonesia first came into this game they were winning all the games Yeah. I think uh, once again I think they go panicked and uh, after another goal after another goal and then with the beautiful fantastic goal by this fellow I think totally shattered the Indonesian dream. Mm. I think they were least expecting this whole situation for them. I think the moment when they saw you know we had such a a crowd that was galvanizing our national team I think it was a lot of things was just least expected from them. I I, I that's what I feel. Maybe mm. maybe they maybe they they weren't really expecting you know this uh, sort of rude awakening from Malaysia. Got his skip out just outside him. Safi. Alex just to keep possession. Clipped in dangerous. The free header! It's three! Malaysia have taken a 3-0 lead against... Oh, sorry, Malaysia have taken a 3-0 lead against Indonesia. Safi with the header. Mohamed Safi. Unmarked, self-destruct Indonesia. And Malaysia go marching on. This is unbelievable. No one would have predicted 3-0. This is getting embarrassing for the Indonesians. Well guys, that was a uh, third goal scored by Safi Sali in the final and what a goal it was. I mean, just just take us through it guys. What 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 what, what was the whole goal is all about? What a cross first for starters, you know, Mali uh, from it wasn't even at the, at the far right hand side of the field, you know, he that he, he didn't really have much of an angle but the way he put it in and the timing of safi's run and wow wala the finish yeah i think that's typical uh, batu jusa hit uh, <laughs> like that i think it's all about timing and the running he made and with the perfect execution of the cross i think made the difference uh, yeah mm-hmm. and i and i think you know the yeah, super sali just definitely you know starting to really tremendously make his mark because that was his fourth goal Yeah, mm-hmm. pretty much. You know, he's in the driving seat now for the Golden Boot Award. I mean, what a way for him to really come into this tournament, right? Absolutely. You know, mm. only started scoring in the semi-finals and already back four goals, man. Mm, yep. Um, and I think this it was the moment that I kind of felt that you know that we're almost there. We're almost there, but you know, there, there's still. There's still another you know unfinished business left. But guys, you know, I mean, what what what's your feeling like after this? Knowing this is the result that we're going to go into the first leg. Well, I think uh, Indonesia still uh, whipped Malaysia in, uh, in the group stages five one. So I think psychologically, we'll be uh, Malaysia was thinking about that. Mm-hmm. Having said that, I think uh, this is the, like what you say earlier: is group games all 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 gone now, and Skarni is is uh, one match which is crucial, and then the first. Like once again, and played a lot of factors in the uh, in their mind. So yeah, what a game! Yep. And 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 you know, uh, again, again, uh, I I would say uh, mentally also we did well by not conceding at the away goal. You see, yep. again, always having to keep a clean sheet at your first leg of a knockout tournament where away goal goals matter is really important. Yeah. So you know, even though scoring three goals, yeah, that's great. Not conceding is also a bonus here. Yep. Yeah, and I, and I think personally, you know, mentally, I think you know the Indonesian side would have been devastated after this result because you know they won all their games, they won every single consecutive games, and suddenly here they are, you know, one knock. I mean, it's a it's a real sucker punch result for them, right? Yeah, and as we say, you know, this was indeed like a real boxing day, and it was like those, you know, those those Mike Tyson punches that just come in, <laughs> just knock knock somebody out like that without knowing, you know, what 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 just happened here, man, you know, something yeah. like that. Indonesia probably felt 
full of confidence coming into this game. Yeah, and, I mean, I mean, and, who could blame them? I mean, if you were yeah. in their shoes, you would, you would feel the same way, right? Hmm. Yeah. Just for info, guys, the crowd they had about eighty-five thousand capacity stadium was fully booked. Mm-hmm. Within two hours, and the president Susilo Bambang, you know, you know, is also was he watching the game live. Mm, okay, mm. I mean, what was he in uh, KL or was he in Jakarta? Jakarta, I'm talking about Jakarta game. So you're actually watching the, I mean, basically, he's keeping an eye on what's happening here, lah. Yes, so basically, oh. I think is, uh, so I think the expectation is very high. Mm-hmm. Okay, and you know what? When we see the crowd in that stadium, I think personally. In my experience, I've never seen Bukit Jalil fill to that capacity, probably since the '98 Commonwealth Games, guys. I mean, I can't remember any other events that took place that brought that kind of crowd to the stadium. I mean, you can you guys recall anything? Yeah, you know, even 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 for us going and uh, watching those those friendly games, even when, when you know Brazil came over yeah. and yeah. all this, you know, that, I mean, you you still could not sell out. You you. you could still see empty seats lah. This one is like you couldn't even find a place for you cannot even find a place to stand. Mm-hmm. It was yeah. like you know if you look, I mean if you just look at it like oh, physically we weren't there, but but just looking at it on TV, the the, the it was full. It was just filled to the brim. Hmm, correct. And I think you know the crowd really played the twelve man twelve man role today, tonight in that result. I mean uh, you know they really came you know brought the noise and. You know, it really, and, really and the guys. laser pointers. <laughs> well, the laser pointers <laughs> can't ignore that as well. <laughs> okay, okay. So now that the fact that you know, this is the result, of the first leg. You know, let's just ask. You know, from first thing, let's. I'm going to ask Carl. You know, what was going through? You know, in he, what what was going through his thought after the fact that you know that we won this game. You know, and you know we managed to take a three nil lead. And at the same time, you know, I'm going to ask Anthony as well. You know, I'm pretty sure the first leg defeat was very unexpected in Asia. So, what was the reaction there? You know, what, I mean, and what was the level, optimism level right going into the second leg? So, you know, let's bring them in, and we'll be right back. Uh, I remember watching the game the uh, Star Sports if I'm mistaken, and uh, obviously the pundits were like, "Oh, Malaysia, da 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 da, Malaysia, blah blah blah." Again, mm-hmm. but. Um, you know, the, the players did well during the first half. And as the game grew, the, the confidence kept building. And obviously, uh, the, 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 men, the mental aspect of Indonesia, you know, hearing the noise and crowds in Mutu, while not being in their own stadium, uh, contributed in a, in a sense. Because like, uh, I think the 5-1 defeat uh, apa, uh, from Malaysia in the first game of the AFF, uh, again, the defense can play a part uh, of, of of the game, so you know have, having that re- that reverse for Indonesia uh, kind of contributed to for, for Malaysia's advantage lah. Then obviously uh, we all had a big laugh around the 60th uh, around the uh, late around the 55th 60 minute uh, when the laser happens. You know when 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 I'm pretty sure both of you remembered the mm-hmm. the incident laser kan mm-hmm. and yeah. that. Uh, that can that kind of like uh, shook, shook the goalkeeper's uh, mental and a few other players then. So and then we immediately scored. Yeah, we scored that. right after that. Yeah. <laughs> scored right after that. So it's a very big reminiscence of how Trent Alexander Arnold uh, gave that cross to Gini while Adam to score against Barcelona mm-hmm. So yeah, yeah. so yeah, yeah. I mean like, like like I think I think they watched. I think Liverpool saw that game got uh, on on YouTube and then they they uh-huh. recreated against Barcelona. <laughs> So nak kata Malaysia nak claim benda tu boleh je lah. Uh. <laughs> uh, yeah. And and keep in mind, around again that night, you know, uh, Shafiq Rahim was fantastic. Amar circulated the, the ball. Uh, Ashari Samsudin, you know, dangerous as ever. And keep in mind, uh, he was, you know, uh, for 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 he's relatively tall for a Malaysian player, and mm-hmm. he has that you know guile uh, with him to create. Uh, spaces and also obviously uh, Safi Sahli scoring two goals in Indonesia fantastic lah uh, I think after Safi scored the second goal I think everyone was confident that we're gonna we, we're gonna after that uh, apa? Uh, sorry after Ashari Samsudin scored the second goal uh, mm. I think the confidence was macam was, was through the roof lah and and the Malaysia <laughs> the Malaysian fans made sure that Indonesia knew that lah so, uh, and at the same time, point I think Indonesia, in a sense, like okay, after after the third goal went in, 
uh, they were trying to consolidate consolidate lah uh, um, the the match and uh, yeah lah after after the match after we all celebrate after semua tu kan then the the the, the realization of like oh no uh, you know they have been in this five one they could you know. Mm-hmm. Do you, do, do you really think that could re- was there any part of you telling that this that could you know replicate that that game again that five one? Uh, that's the thing. Um, you know your your fearful side uh, mm-hmm. start, starts to 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 emanates. You know, it's like oh no, you know, um, you know they could they could create history, but at the same time, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, guys. Uh, Indonesia hasn't won an AFF championship, correct? No, they haven't won yet. They yes, won yet. so uh, yeah, there, there you go. So they would definitely want to win it on home soil. They, they, they would, they would. I'm pretty sure they do not want Malaysia to, 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 to win it at the Gloria Bukarno. I don't know if you remember at the time, but there's lots of um, controversy going on between Malaysia and Indonesia in the political circles at the time. You know, like Malaysia would say this, and Indonesia would say, "Oh, they're stealing our culture," blah blah blah. So there was, um, it became much more of a nationalistic thing than a football thing. And I think that the um, the supposed laser beam incident gave the Indonesians a get out, get out of jail free card. Like, well, you know, so they could focus more upon that and more upon you know the nefarious Malaysians where they're trying to trying to put put off the Indonesians with the with these um, underhand methods. And I think, yeah, that, that gave them back in Indonesia a sense that you know, well, we weren't beaten by fair means; we were beaten by these unfair, unfair means. And again, with opportunities just to overlook how poor the team had been and how lucky they've been to get to the final. Um, but you know, like I say, Malaysia dominated. Malaysia deserved the win and deserved to win three 0 I'm surprised it took so long for the goals to come. Actually, but you know, it, Indonesia's tactics tended to be well. Let's play for a disruption or a halt to stop the game. So, uh, Anthony, do you do you do you feel that that if if we go back to the first leg and you know. Do you think that 5-1 victory was actually, you know, a bad omen in a way for Indonesia? Maybe they took things lightly against Malaysia, underestimated the whole, the whole scene here. Um, 3-2-1 start again. I think probably, you know, to a certain extent, yes. I mean, but, you know, the Malaysia game and also the Lao game. Um, they scored 11 goals in two games and suddenly Indonesia were world beaters. So, you know, it, it had the effect of Energizing the football the public in Indonesia, but I think uh, I don't think even Alfred Reader would have would have thought that um, Malaysia could play like that again. You know, so every once in a while, like Aston Villa can go to Anfield maybe another ninety nine times and never repeat that seven two score. <laughs> and the same with this. I mean, Indonesia would not beat Malaysia five one again. It's just one of those things that happen on the night. I guess like people, the pundits say, it's football. You can't you can't anticipate these one off performances. And I think that um, you know the reality kicked in as as, a, as the um, tournament wore on for Indonesia. And whereas in Malaysia, you know they knew what they had to do. And, you know they they got a nil nil draw against Thailand. So you know they started off so slowly, but you know they they got into they got into the, into the zone as the tournament wore on and improved. So you know yeah, Indonesia peaked way too early, and then no no way you know they did brilliantly against Malay against the Philippines against a very disciplined Philippines team. Uh, you know, Malaysia was a step up against a step ahead of the Philippines, I think. But, but, but how was it how was it like on the on the street, the layman the layman Indonesian fan and all that? Did, was there really a sense of optimism in that in them going into the second leg? Like like you know did, did or was it was it like their shoulders are just dropped and, and they know that you know it's it's gonna be a goner this 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 final um, for all the cynicism, Indonesia football fans are very, very optimistic. They always think they're going to win. So I mean, there's, there's still a big crowd there. There's still, there's still thought that maybe they can claw back some honour mm-hmm. by defeating the Malaysians in the game. But um, which, of course, is what they managed to do. But I don't think really there's, but there's a real sense that we're going to overturn this three-goal deficit. I mean, just, the team didn't have enough quality for that. Mm-hmm. Not, not against the Malaysians. I mean, like I said before, the Malaysians just were far more disciplined and far, had much more of a game plan and Indonesians look to maybe, you know, Mavericks like like Manjani, for example, to try and do something, whereas instead of maybe a much more solid team performance. There is the full-time whistle and it's been a real comprehensive display from Malaysia. Absolutely brilliant throughout that second half. 
the talking point will be the six and a half minute stop that we had because of the lasers being shot into the eyes of the Indonesian players. But Sassi, overall, fair for you? Yeah, I think so. Malaysia really had a spell there with the went out and they made a difference. A couple of individual brilliant performances, but uh, overall, I think Malaysia really deserved it. Okay, well, it's boils down to the uh, return leg. Indonesia, we need to play uh, Indonesia in Jakarta himself. And to, just to correct to my earlier statement, the president, the Indonesian president were watching live in the return leg in Jakarta. So, mm -hmm. uh, Sivan, uh, that was the, uh, what a game. Okay. Patient. Yeah. Hey, but before we go into the second leg, you know, I think it's important to, uh, you know, I thought it's important to ask, uh, you know, one of our regular guests of our Bola Bola Show podcast, Marco Negri, because he has a very interesting story to share with us. So, just listen to this. Uh, hi, yeah. So it was uh, sometime in uh, December um, of 2010. I was then a um, uh, was the, uh, was a student uh, abroad, and um, I was attending this uh, conference uh, that was organized, um, and it had um, the Indonesian ambassador uh, to the United States at the time, uh, Dr. Dino Patijalal. Um, uh, who was giving a keynote address and the attendees actually included um, a lot of uh, I think mostly they were they were all local they were all Americans aside from uh, maybe myself and a few others so it was quite interesting because uh, Dr. Dino Jalal is somebody who is known to um, uh, to make off the uh, off the cuff remarks you know and he tends to be very uh, engaging and funny with his audience so um, I knew um, at that week that he was very passionate about uh, Indonesia's performance uh, in the AFF uh, Suzuki, uh, AFF Suzuki Cup tournament then uh, because um, I think they were hosting it and then they were like making, uh, they were producing results um, uh, which uh, led them uh, to the final. So, well, that was the thing. Um, they were quite, he was quite confident uh, about Indonesia's chances until they were, I guess, flatly beaten by Malaysia uh, during the first leg uh, in Bukit Jalil, uh, where we won 3-0. So I remember uh, that conference that I attended, uh, when we had him as the keynote speaker, happened uh, after uh, the first leg, before the second leg in Jakarta. So he was, uh, you know, he singled me out in the audience and saying that, you know, he was, uh, he was uh, not happy with his uh, Malaysian uh, colleague, you know. So everyone just, that room had probably uh, hundreds of people and they all turned around. You know, it was a conference setting, so they all turned around and looked at me and, you know, I felt a bit overwhelmed and uh, under pressure. Uh, also, but I was actually, it made me, you know, sort of proud being Malaysian that, you know, um, and that we we had that result against uh, our our fiercest uh, rivals Indonesia, and I think the setting that I was in it was quite an academia uh, setting, and um, the fact that um, they were able to you know talk about how our relationship uh, was defined by you know the people to people and the uh, sports or events or tournaments that were taking place. I think that that really. Um, that really made it uh, unique, you know, when it comes to uh, Indonesia Malaysia, Indonesia Malaysia relations. You know, it goes be, uh, it transcends beyond uh, a lot of all the um, conventional aspects of uh, relationship or, or or the relationship between two countries. You know, it was even defined by a fierce uh, rivalry in sports. So yeah, so that was uh, how I um, uh, spoke about the thing with uh, Dr. Dino. Of course. Um, Dr. Dino Patijalal, of course, after the game, after it all ended, he was, uh, I, I guess he was upset, but he did, he did show me that he was pleased of the fact that uh, Safi, Safi Sali uh, emerged as top scorer and, um, and uh, decided to uh, move to Indonesia immediately after and play for Pelita Jaya. So yeah, so I guess uh, things were, uh, things were back, uh, things were well again but between both of us and uh, yep. It was uh, our, our our friendship resumed normally after after the AFF Suzuki Cup tournament. And guys, you know, uh, before before the game even starts, you know, when when our guys were basically you know in the hotel and all that, you know, what I mean, what 
the amount of challenge and atmosphere that these guys have to face like 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 what you were saying you know earlier you know really needing to really fight for their lives and their lives i mean in general was really at at, at stake and at risk here right? mm, yep i mean I, i when i saw the clips of all those uh I mean, I'm not going to say anything bad. I mean, I, I believe there are passionate fans out there who just want to know to, you know, do whatever it takes to help their team win. And of course, you know, they decided to just, you know, park themselves in front of our, our boys' hotel, you know, really not giving our boys yeah, yeah. a peace of mind getting inside the bus. And, you know, for the fact that I think our boys need to be transferred by an armored vehicle, you know. But, uh, you know, let, let's ask from someone who I think, were, I believe, was there had, who was probably reporting this whole thing you know was probably reporting the whole incident while it was happening so once again we are joined by Fazri Haziz to share with us those intriguing moments even before the first kick of the second leg final was made inside the Golora Munkarno check this out I still remember getting into the stadium I had to cover my uh, nation jersey colors in the in the jacket <laughs> And once I entered the stadium, I still remember the late uh, Julia Perez were performing for their fans. Uh, there were a few performing uh, local edition artists were performing as well. Uh, it was, uh, how do you say, it was an interesting final, uh, running up to the final. And then I could see the uh, Barracuda bringing the Malaysian players. Uh, they, they got into the stadium and... Uh, Send off the players and Malaysian uh, coaches. As uh, security was quite tight for our team, and it was not safe for them to go into a regular uh, team bus to the stadium. You know, what was the situation and the feeling like when the Malaysian team was greeted by, you know, I don't know, hundreds or thousands of Indonesian fans waiting at the hotel lobby, doing everything, whatever they can, right, Elwin? Just to, you know, give, give our boys, you know, really, really put, really give our boys a really tough time. Yeah, yeah, as, as you can really see, the Indonesian, you know, fans were really, it was really a psychological warfare, you know, the, the, the way these guys just, Surrounded, basically, they sent their whole infant infantry to the whole <laughs> to the hotel. There, yeah. you know, they they were basically they, they, the fans in Indonesia really acted as the twelfth man, you know, and and they were like as what you say, you know, they were really doing whatever it takes to really help their team here. Yeah, yeah, know? yeah. I mean, I mean, I mean, to be fair with them, you know, I think it, it's just it's just uh, you know probably their part in trying to help see how their team can recover after that defeat in Bukit Jalil. And, uh, you know, I, I have to, you know, sometimes when I, I think back, you know, how, what was going through the players' mind, the fact that they had to be transported to the stadium with, an, with five armored vehicle. Can you imagine that going to the stadium in an armored vehicle? Yeah, and, something and, not something not all footballers. Uh, it's exactly. not, it's, no, normally it's in a normal bus, right? Yeah, it's, uh, it's always a team bus, you know? Yes. Yeah. So you can imagine inside the armored vehicle, Coach Rajagopal trying to give his players, you know, that, that motivational speech and talk and all that. And on top of that, on the way to the stadium, you know, and I look at all these YouTube clips, you know, uh, some of the clips that were recorded back in uh, 2010, which you can find them on YouTube. It almost it seems like the entire country is outside the stadium waiting for our boys to come. You yeah. know, every single Indonesian is there. And to my understanding, if I, I believe that the team bus were not able to drop the player at their usual drops. You know, they always have this usual place where they can drop the players so they can get off to the dressing room and all that. Mm. In this case, I was, I believe that it was actually because of their safety issues and all that, they had to sort of like pull in the bus or the armored vehicle into the field inside the stadium, mm. the running track there, and drop them there. So they had to go through the dressing room from that. So, so, so it's like normally where we see like in Malaysian League, sometimes we see the FRU truck being parked at the back of the goal post. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, so, yeah. Mind-boggling, right? I mean, what, yeah. what, what, what do you think? I mean, for Coach Raja Gopa, I mean, what do you think was going through in his mind in this kind of in this kind of situation? You know, I think uh, for, for Coach Raja Gopa, you know, for, 
uh, most importantly is the mental preparation. You know, he really had to prepare his players mentally. You know, for 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 this battle, and and he has done a fantastic job that to really, you know, let I mean, really tell his boys, let's not cave in now. You know, let's not get scared of this atmosphere. You know, let's they they have to be fearless going into this. You know, you cannot be quaking in your boots in one corner. You know, by by this entire atmosphere and everything around them, because in the end of the day. You're going to the field to play that football for the 90 minutes, right? Mm. And and I think that the, he he really had got these guys to be razor sharp in their focus, you know, really focus, prepare yourself mentally, and and, and don't don't get scared with what's going on around you, yeah. Mm-hmm. And 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 it you know, in, in the end, it was you know, great. I mean, th- th- these guys really did a great job there, you know. And all credit goes to Coach Raja Gopal for this. Mm, yep. Yep. And you know, before uh, you know, before we get into the further nitty gritty details of this game, you know, uh, let's ask Carl about his thoughts about going into the second leg. Uh, so obviously, the the start realization happened, and uh, uh, obviously, I think uh, we all just wanted, uh, you know, we we all just wanted to have the cup presented to us. Uh, on at Bukit Jalil on the 26th like and but again the competition formats dictate like we have to play a whole new way like again so uh-huh. uh, we went to uh, Malaysia went there and obviously uh, leading up to the game you know the punditry can be a bit annoying from time to time you know we, you know like oh Malaysia I think kalah malam ni and whatever lah kan semua tu kan you know obviously it, you know the more certain pundits say triggers us the more fearful we became uh, so to like 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 the optimism was there, then it slowly you know dissipates little, little by little, little. You know you have certain friends. Uh, I, obviously we all have those kind of friends that macam kata ah, kalah lah tu apa semua lah. Mm-hmm. You know. But don't know. But sometimes you don't know whether they're playing reverse psychology or not lah. You know sometimes. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know real fo- fo- football fans are very superstitious. Super yeah, 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 right? yeah. So but I'm like oh no lah guys, boleh je apa semua tu kan. You know, so so everyone had that 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 nila kan, and mm-hmm. obviously lah. Uh, I remember uh, my friend uh, was like uh, SMSing again. This was the era of SMS, not the era of WhatsApp. Yep. <laughs> so you heard that you heard that right? <laughs> SMS. That that, that 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 tells you exactly how long this this thing has been. <laughs> yeah. That tells you. No, imagine you're SMSing ever uh, a friend of mine. SMSing me uh, things that he wants to relay to me by paying the SMS. Yes, correct. There you go. <laughs> it's not free. <laughs> and then I pula bodoh sangat to reply balik. <laughs> <laughs> you know, he was saying, uh, I remember, remember you, he texted lah, I wish I can find that phone again and and like present to you guys, look at the conversation that we had lah kan. Mm-hmm. I think we wasted, uh, we wasted about uh, 20 ringgit worth of uh, mm-hmm. text, text me a line because again, SMS back then wasn't cheap guys. Yeah, 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 it, it wasn't, wasn't. It wasn't. <laughs> so yeah. uh, there was a lot of back and forth, and I think one thing that the the opening the opening uh, parts, right? I remember uh, the conversation me and uh, my friend was like, "Oh, look, Carl, um, uh, but, uh, uh, Malaysia should be uh, uh, Malaysia wore a very interesting kit because uh, obviously the uh, coach Shashi Gopal wore uh, uh, throughout the whole stretch uh, we kept wearing blue 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 again mm. uh, pretty sure that's a question for you guys that you guys everyone wants to ask coach Shashi Gopal uh, why blue uh, but uh, the indicator that my friend gave uh, like uh, one of the things that he was uh, you know uh, cucuk lah kan dia macam mm. like uh, look Malaysia pakai jersey apa, lopsided jerseys you know Mm-hmm. So he was like, "Oh, this is indicator number one that we're gonna going to lose." I'm, I was like, "Relax, lah. Game will not start lagi, good." Mm. <laughs> okay, and you know, and for all you guys out there, you might be wondering where is that other voice of the bola bola? You know, the guy, the guy is missing and all that. But actually, today it's uh, Papa Bala. Is you know, his his son Lakshan is celebrating his birthday. So you know, Bala is really you know being a family man today. And kudos to him, you know, celebrating yep, yep. that birthday. So happy birthday, Lakshan! You know. Got a great daddy in Bala, so you know. Hope the birthday celebration goes well. So and uh, no, now coming back, coming back to this game, you know, it's it was really important, you know, to for the Malaysian team to not let Indonesia have a great like a, a fast start, you know, a positive start, especially mm-hmm. you know, and uh, and and what you know, see what you know, what what worse could possibly happen, man? When those guys, you know, that 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 penalty, you know, you want to you want to 
take us through that. Wow. I mean, uh, when that penalty happened, obviously, you know, you can imagine what was going through the player's mind or even the coaching staff and everybody because, I mean, let's just listen to this clip first and then we'll get right back into what we can think about what could have happened if the penalty was scored this early. Will Carol Fami save the blushes for Malaysia? Oh, that's a poor penalty! That's an absolutely shocking penalty. And there it was, Carol Fami stepping up big time to save that penalty. I mean, it was quite a weak penalty, nevertheless, but still, you know, he read it well, he read the players. He was spot on on deciding which direction he's going to make to dive and he was absolutely right. And in my opinion, you know, that save itself was absolutely important because at the end of the day, you got to remember, I mean, the game was still somewhere in the first half. Had Indonesia scored that penalty, probably, you know, the morale would have affected the players, especially the defenders and goalkeepers knowing they've already conceded an early goal. And, and you know, in a way, the momentum can slightly shift over towards Indonesia's favour. But the fact that, you know, Fami saved the penalty and that itself, I think, was such a moral boost for everyone. You can see, you know, the bench and everyone, you know, in jubilant mode because, you know, the fact that it still means it's still 0-0. It means, you know, the, you, know, the, you know, no damage has been done. You know, they can just continue from where they left out before the penalty, penalty was uh, taken. So, yeah. Erwin, I mean, how, how important it is? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean... To, to me, you know, saving saving a penalty is that basically like you know you're you're scoring another goal because it, it really as for Indonesia when 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 they had that that chance and of course the penalty was a golden chance for them to really come back you know come back in this game you know after all the after all they've been going through and all this and and for Cairo Fami to really step up and he, to to me it's like you know Cairo Fami did did indeed score a goal for us you know by just saving that penalty the the. The entire bench was jubilant and all this and for and oh boy, I think I think this this was what basically you know like they say the as the saying goes the straw that broke the camel's back. I think for Indonesia this was this was that straw I think that broke the camel's back because uh, you know missing that penalty completely affected this Indonesian players' mindset. You know and and, and they were you know you 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 could see you know that that demoralizing effect. Because you know, from the six-yard box, you have that chance, that, that, that open chance, and then you don't take it. And you know, Malaysia—I mean, Malaysia saved the, the keeper saved the penalty somehow. So you know, yeah, it, and, it and really not, had a demoralizing and effect forget, on these guys. And not yeah. to forget, playing in, in front of their demanding fans. Yes. Yeah. Yep. Yes. So, so it it, it, it was really something that uh, you know really demoralized the Indonesian team here. Yeah, yep, man. And of course, you know, we kept the momentum. You know, we still continue to soak the pressure from the home team and, in, you know, try to hit on the counter whenever possible. And oh boy, it eventually paid big time. After receiving strong support, a chance here for Malaysia. Can they pull the trigger? They do! And that's an incredible goal! What a stunner! From Mohamed Safi, who's now scored three goals in the finals overall. And that surely is the end for Indonesia. What a stunning finish for the striker who couldn't score at all in the early stages. And their reaction from Marcus Harrison tells you all, Malaysia now four up on aggregate, on the break, drifting in between the two defenders, and that's an unstoppable finish. What an amazing goal. You know, the way, the, the, the way Safi just shot that ball. I tell you, you know, you you really would not want to be at the back of that net, man. I tell you, he just rattled. I mean, the the, the whole goalpost rattled there. You know, the, the he almost tore the net. It was the 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 way he controlled it and he just took it and the way he shot it. You know, it was like a bullet, a real thunderbolt that you know really. Yeah. I mean, that 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 whole counter attack, the the the, the that entire sequence of it, you know, was just was just brilliant, man. Yeah, yeah. 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 And I think not to forget the pass. The pass of that goal was absolutely beautiful. I mean, yeah. I mean, it almost penetrated through a line of Indonesian defense yes. and found Safi at the right place at the right time. I mean, you can watch it in slow motion and it was so beautiful to watch. Right? Yeah, Maybe? yeah, yeah. And, 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 and I think even if you watch it in slow motion, it did, it did come off a bit fast because Safi was really fast in that. Yeah, <laughs> in yeah. That, in that, yeah, in that move, yeah. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah. So I mean, basically, you know, that goal, of course, made him the entire top scorer, right? Yep. And this is where Safi finally takes the golden boot here, man. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And, and in some ways, you know, I think overall, you know, we can say that his performance in that AFF Suzuki Cup somewhat, uh, you know, can be uh, sort of related to Paulo Rossi's accomplishment in 1982 World Cup. Why, why would you say that? Yeah, it's really. I mean, it, it, it can. There can never be another more uh, clearer comparison. I would say, you know, from from the way uh, Rossi. And, and and now in in fact the the late Paulo Rossi you know yeah. that, that yeah tragedy just struck this uh, this year so you know condolences to Paulo Rossi and his family but but the, the the way the way Paulo Rossi finished off that World Cup is is exactly the way Safi Sali ended this tournament you know the 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 that, that old conundrum the old conundrum of how this whole thing transpired and how this whole thing happened you know. And 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 it was indeed you know uh, Safi's stage you know for him to finally answer his critics you know stepping out you know big time in a knockout stage you know after having not scored in the group stage at all so you know he, he did play play some part uh, his part in some SCs but you know to really come up in this in just this knockout this knockout games was was fantastic and you know pretty much you know with that goal it was. It was a done deal already, you know. That that, that you you can almost feel it. The trophy is certainly ours, you know. And and for this Indonesian team, you know, I I I don't think so. They are, they are going to make a comeback after this. You know, after having lost the after having lost the first leg, already missing the penalty and then getting just struck on by this goal by Sapi, you know, like what I mean, what 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 do you think? Do you think this was it for for, for the Indonesian team? Yeah, I guess so. I mean, even I, I knew it really. The moment that goal went in, it was pretty much, a, you know, the, uh, the the mission is accomplished for Coach Rajan Gopal, his coaching staff, and the entire team. And for that reason alone, I think finally now we can say that we have witnessed Malaysia winning a trophy. It's something which, you know, we constantly always hear from our parents. You know, parents always keep telling us, you know, back in our days, Malaysia was so good. Malaysia was winning this. Malaysia was achieving that. And here it is. Our, our time has come. You know, to be able to you know tell the same thing to our children or great grandchildren one day that yeah. has won something. I mean, I hope, of course, we hope this is not going to be the only thing. But as of now, you know, it is during our time, and you know, um, I don't know, Elvin. I mean, what what can we say about his success? I mean, is Raja Gopal? I mean, we really thank him, right? Yeah, definitely, and 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 it's something very significant, you know, because uh, definitely, Coach Raja Gopal, you know, opened up a new chapter in Malaysian football, and you know, he definitely started this this revolution. And and why is this, you know, still being talked about ten years old? You know, is because uh, it, you know, it's against our fiercest rival, you know, and this was a Derby Nusantara final, which which really meant a lot to the fans, you know, and 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 imagine, you know, uh, especially after the. the beginning of the second leg and, and, and what was happening, you know, getting into the game, you know, like you mentioned the armored vehicles and all this. So, 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 you know, it, it just added to the whole story, to the whole fairy tale, this whole story of this, of, of, of this, uh, this victory here. So, you know, coach, definitely thank you, coach Raja Gopal for, for what you have done and really, you know, op- op- really bringing out the best and starting this new revolution here. Yeah. 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 And of course, you know, for for us, you know, the previous memory that we all had was the 1989 Sea Games. Uh, we were too young to remember anything back then, and yeah. I could I could hardly remember much. Of course, I knew Malaysia won the, the gold medal, and then we yeah. know, we got a public holiday, a day off from school. Yeah. But this is happening during the time when we we're all in our you know in our, our peak adulthood and able to you know feel it, you know, experience it in in, in such you know enthusiastic fashion, right, Elwin? Yeah, correct. Because because the, yeah. it was basically back in that era, you know, that eighteen, that eighty nine Sea Games, and, and, and sorry, but I, I, I will just go off tangent a bit because it was the, during that era also, you know, you just add on a few years. It was the ninety two Thomas Cup, and, and basically Malaysians that time, you know, they were starved of uh, basically uh, this 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 kind of success. You see. And, and 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 to go back far to, to go back all the way then and, and and then finally you know like to, to to really cherish this 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 moment again you see and and of course it was it was not just that you know because uh, what what happened for the in the squad also is it was you see the the the, the name that the name of the guys in the squad you know um, in in general you know basically 
not not any one of them had more than 20 caps representing Malaysia at that time, you know. So basically, it was the beginning of this. If you can say the golden the golden generation of Malaysian players and all these you no know, names which have indeed become household names now, like Safiq uh, Safiq Rahim, you know, S. Kunalan, Mali Jasuli, Padli Sas, you know, Matio, and of course Kairul Fami Chemat, you know, Ape. So you know, these these guys later on became household names uh, and and very much mentioned by all our fans. But this was the beginning of their story. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And we actually saw this generation growing old to the players that they are today, right? Yeah. yeah, and you know, I think this entire story of this AF, this AFF Suzuki Cup is endowed with an interesting journey for Malaysia. All right, you know, when you think of the way we started off the tournament to the journey that you know, the whole story, the drama, especially in that last game against Laos that we had to go through with <laughs> Thailand taking the lead, almost you know, jeopardizing our hope and all that. Yeah, and you know, and then what happened in the subsequently in the knockout stage and all that. I know this definitely should be. One day has to be put into the big screen. If I, if I may say this, you know, somebody needs to come up with an idea of how to make this a movie. Yeah, yeah, yeah perfect, precisely. It's just a perfect story. And you know, before we proceed, I would like to take this moment to ask our guests as well. You know, why after a decade on this edition of the AFS Suzuki Cup still remains the most talked about edition? And we're going to start with Fazri because uh, he has something interesting to share with us about the outcome of that final, and then followed up by Carl and Anthony. I think throughout the years, EFF Suzuki Cup uh, has been more than just a regional tournament. The winner probably takes uh, pride as being the best in this region. And obviously, each team, each nation that participates will give full attention to the tournament, although it's just a regional tournament. But I see in years to come, probably with the likes of, of South Malaysia, Thailand, and even Vietnam, if we continue to progress further in World Cup qualifiers, I, I foresee that probably these nations might just send their under 23 or under 21 team to, uh, to this tournament. Are mentally strong. They, after winning the, uh, the first league 3 nil, I was pretty confident that we would take back the cup. But of, of course, there were obstacle in uh, achieving that because uh, I arrived two days before the second final in Jakarta and the hotel once I put on the TV it was all the local media and Indonesia and also the papers were focusing on the second semi-final they keep saying that kalau Malaysia bisa 3-0 kami bisa 5-0 kalau in Malaysia I mean is that this is an insult to the national team what they think that with such a weak team that they can just win us 5 nil, But I, I don't blame them because in, in uh, years before, decades before, they did win big against us 4 nil in the 97 uh, C game and also 6 nil in the 99 uh, C game against our national side. So obviously they were high in confidence. But this is a different Malaysian team altogether. They know their mission down there was to to ensure that we bring back the cup, and we did that by getting an early goal in Gloria Bung Karno, by Sabi Sadi's fifth goal of the tournament of a true pass for Mashari Samsudin, which is a beautiful killer pass, I see, to silence the crowd. Although they did come back and beat us 2 1, but we won a great 4 2, and uh, I think it was a sweet victory. I still remember getting out of the stadium was a bit of a problem for the Malaysian media. Uh, we had to stay for more than one hour in the uh, changing room area. We had to sit in the referee's room until uh, the AFF uh, and also the local security officials give the green light for us to leave the stadium and walk back to our hotel. So I did spend uh, some time also with the Malaysian team near their the changing room. It was a bit hostile after the press conference. Uh, the AFF officials and also the PSSI officials had to usher us to safety as there was few uh, fans who were like coming after the Malaysian media in, how do you say, uh, just outside the, the press conference room, but there was a barrier there that probably menghalang uh, lah, fans Indonesia dekat dengan Malaysian media dekat dalam stadium 
Gloria Bung Karno. But after that, after we left the stadium, after almost about two hours, it was late at night and it was all clear outside in the, the areas of uh, Gloria Bung Karno Stadium. And uh, no unwanted incident happened during uh, the night. Uh, if I were to summarize the whole experience watching that 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 batch of players growing up, um, it's you know stepping into maturity. I think uh, if you really look at the players, they weren't in their prime yet, but when they stepped forward, they stepped into you know proper uh, maturity, mere, mere, mere mentality, you know, on the pitch of course lah. Um, they decided that you know what it's for the taking. We can create history. Let's let's be mature about it, a bit more discipline, and um, just try to achieve the best we can, lah. And it, it showed it, lah. So I think this the the story of the 2010 year that batch, lah, was uh, we all need to be mature uh, in order to 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 strive for for something greater, for something great, lah. So yeah, if I have to summarize up, the maturity level back then was you know commanding. You know, we lost five one first game. You know, and then. We drew against Thailand, which was no easy feat, you know. And then we won against Myanmar five one with a bit of luck. We went to the uh, semi final. We won three. Uh, we won two uh, zero against Vietnam. We drew against them. We qualified to the final. Um, we won three uh, zero. You want to say a bit of luck because of, of laser man? Up to you guys. Enjoy the petition. Uh, and and we won. We won four two on aggregate. And everyone. You know, matured. You know, the the team matured, the fans matured, Malaysians matured to embrace one another. So, I think at the end of it, guys, in summary, we all matured that one week until the new year, lah. <laughs> <laughs> I think because um, from the Indonesian point of view, like I said before, it was kind of like the Euro '96 moment when football became popular, if you like, amongst the chattering classes and moved beyond its normal fan base, um, you know, people were buying replica shirts, the shirts were sold out apparently, the people were buying tracksuit tops, and things that didn't normally happen. The first time I went to see an Indonesian game, there was 7,000 at Boncano, and now you had like, for the final and the two semi-finals, you had nearly 300,000 watching the games. So, it touched the nerve, it touched the nerve of the country. Um, I think for Malaysia, you know, it followed on from the sea games, and you had the sea games afterwards as well, if I recall correctly. And you had the makings of, you know, you had a really, really good team there. It's a team that people could ad- identify with. Um, and Malaysia was developing his own heroes, people like Safi Sali, um, Cairo Fami, and the other names, forget me, I've gone with, I've forgotten now the other names. But um, they were becoming household names, no show one, of course, becoming household names. So I think that um, Malaysia winning its first tournament was something special. And the final, with the nearly 200,000 people watching it in total over the two legs between two massive rivals, of course, it's, that's always going to be special, um, no matter who wins. And I think, you know, the fact that maybe Indonesians do recall that time, you know, part of them was thinking, we should build upon this, we should develop. Of course, they didn't do it. Everything went tits up in the next few weeks. Whereas Malaysia, to a certain extent, was able to develop. Mm-hmm. I mean, you you were saying that you know the 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 passion for the national team uh, became huge. Where else? I suppose in terms of club football, Indonesian league still had a massive following, right? Before that, even before that. Yeah, I mean, this is um, this is the same year. Before, if I get this right, I mean, caught you, maybe I'm wrong, but it's the same year that Arama won the league, 2010, or was it the year before? And Arama had took 60,000 to Bongkano Stadium for the final game against Persija. And the crowd there was over 100,000. Um, you would often see Persija take five, six, seven thousand fans to away games. Same with Persia Bandung, they would take large numbers away. So, you know, the, the domestic game, you know what it's like in Indonesian football fans. And they're nutters. They go to, the, you know, they, they turn out in big numbers for their games. Um, more out of duty rather than any sense that they're going to do anything. But for the, I think for the national team, after those first two wins, there was a sense that perhaps we could do something. Maybe we're not good enough, but we're going to enjoy the ride anyway. A bit like when England reached the semi-finals in the, in the tournament, you know, we're not going to win it, but let's enjoy the ride. Mm-hmm. And, and, and you know, just, just wondering, you know, which final hurt the most for Indonesia? Was it losing to Malaysia in 2010, or was it the one against Singapore five years five years earlier? 
the Singapore one is slightly before my time. I think I watched it in a bar somewhere in Jakarta. Okay. I think any time it's losing towards Malaysia is going to be worse. Um, purely because of the rivalry between the two countries. Um, you know, in the, in the final again in Thailand, six years later, they were, they were, it's Thailand. I mean, no one's going to beat Thailand half the time. But I think losing to Malaysia, getting so close, would have been the one that hurt the most. Yes. I mean, likewise, if um, if Indonesia had beaten Malaysia, um, that would be hurting a lot more in KL and Kelantan and places like that than it would then if they lost to Vietnam in the final, for example. You know, losing always hurts, but it's magnified much more when you lose against your most bitter rivals. So there you have it, guys. So now to wrap up this entire, you know, this uh, this uh, monumental episode, I was thinking, I don't know what. I mean, looking back at your, looking back at this whole uh, 2010 edition. I mean, how did it affect you on a personal level? For you, I mean, maybe in your case, Mala, you know, like what you were back then and now and all that. I mean, how how would you look back on it? For me, I think the, I was the time working in an automotive Japanese company, and uh, I remember all the workers, you know, asking when they want to take a leave because. We were pushing for output and then they want to take break because they want to watch this game. So I still remember my, my memory. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, in fact, I gave them a few of them leave. Uh, so it was a good memory as, and also I think my first son at the time. Mm-hmm. So in the personal level, basically, it's uh, maybe the AFF son, I guess, <laughs> when we won the first cup. Ah, okay. So, That's interesting. <laughs> yeah. So I think personal level, I think Malaysia came far after what happened. I think we have to had our turmoil when we lost... Uh, Quite a number of games, especially to, to our Arabian friends. Mm-hmm. Uh, and looking back 10 years, I think Malaysia performance, I would say, maybe just gradually have improved maybe 10 to 20 percent. Uh, but I think we should go, we should try for more. Then I think remember once uh, Thailand, the Thailand national team coach, uh, what is his name? Uh, Kathy Suk. Uh, uh, he said, uh, not only Malaysia or even Thailand, I think the entire Southeast Asia have to look beyond uh, this AFF uh, Suzuki Cup. They can keep that as a platform, yes. Mm-hmm. They, they, I think we need to look into a bigger picture. We want Asia Cup to start with to mm-hmm. post and to build up. Because I, th- I feel the level is, I think even now, I think compared to 10 years ago, I think the level doesn't change much. So this I still sleep more on the. Uh, it's not like Copa America. It's ten ten nation, but we're talking a participant of Brazil and Argentina and Uruguay and Colombia. Mm-hmm. We should have this. I would say AFF is supposed to be that kind of range. and this is a worldwide tournament. Mm-hmm. Okay. Long range, I think still. I feel it maybe just give a joy for all the Southeast Asia because knowing the fact that we can't do much in the uh, in the bigger bigger tournaments or even the bigger opportunities. This one. I, my opinion. I think I think Southeast Asia have to look beyond this. Mm, okay, that's that's a fair point. I mean, what about you, Alvin? For me, I mean, basically, for me, this past ten years has been. Uh, I have gone through lots of things. You know, basically, uh, on a, on a, on a personal level, you know, in terms of uh, changing jobs and at the same time also, you know, did start my own business, didn't really work out, come back into the job market again. And, you know, lots of things that happened. But uh, personally, for me as well, you know, during this time, you know, football has always been there. And, and one of the biggest uh, milestones in my life was uh, three years ago, I got married. You know, mm-hmm. and, uh, you know, that's, that's definitely a big milestone here, you know, as well. Uh, starting, a, starting a family, starting a household and all this. So, it's, these, these are personal, personal milestones in my life. Uh, as for as for footballing terms, you know, and and, and guys, you know, uh, we, we we also need to remember one thing, you know, the one one of our best things as we end this year is to actually start up this bola bola show, right? Mm-hmm. Yep. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> and, and 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 this 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 has definitely been a, a great journey for three of us, you know, getting into this getting into this new platform, you know. Mm-hmm. Uh, jumping in head first, diving in head first to really understand how this works and, and, and put our passion and our mouth, you know, where, where, where we really want it to be, you know, in, in a platform where people who love listening to, you know, football that, that happened, you know, like this, this like, you know, we're talking about something that happened 10 years ago, right? And, mm-hmm. and, it, can, and it still lives in the memory of many of our friends, many of our fans, and many of those Malaysians out there. So, you know, 
great times and you know i really like to thank uh, the malaysian national team for giving us this this lasting memory i hope there's more memories to come in future that we you know we, we will still remember this as and let's let's not let's hope this is not the only thing we will remember you know maybe yeah, in yeah. 10 years time there will be better <laughs> things to remember about the malaysian yeah yeah yeah, <laughs> yeah. national team yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. what about you sibai Well, I have to agree with you, Lelwin. I mean, uh, you know, it's it's been a long. It, it took us too long for us to be able to experience this sort of euphoria. You know, this sort of celebration. Mm-hmm. You know, eighty nine to two thousand nine when we won the Sea Games gold uh, gold medal. I mean, even when that happened, I I didn't really felt it so much. You know, but when this two thousand ten episode, this AFF Zukika happened, uh, I mean, it was it was a it was a different thing. It was sort of, it was a real different thing. On a personal level, I would say that the. It happened at a time that when uh, I was going through uh, a different phase in my life, and what this national team's success at that time gave me was, you know, this uh, room of confidence that you know that this endless possibility, like anything, anything can happen. You just need to go out there and pursue it, and you know, just go for it. And I think mm-hmm. I can say that you know, ten years down, ten years from uh, down the road. That has been what I've been doing. You know, I went for it. I got married, but to someone very special. And again, I decided to pursue something which is like what you just mentioned, Elwin. This whole podcast thing—it's another new journey for us. And you know, no, no regrets, no regrets at all. And uh, another interesting thing I have to—I mean, I, I know this this might sound weird, but I remember when um, you know this. I mean, I need to touch a little bit on politics. Uh, you know, when uh, Pakatan lost the 2013 general election, mm-hmm. I remember. You know, there was one commentator, and I don't know where I remember reading it. You know, guys, we 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 need to have faith. You know that you know change can happen. Remember, our Malaysian national team went through 20 years without success, and you know they keep pushing, they keep trying, and finally they won the 2010 AFC Cup. That's kind of interesting way to put it. You know, trying to look mm-hmm. back at. Uh, That national team success in you know in so many different perspectives and so many different ways, and let's not forget uh, it was also a time that when you know the country badly needed this, you know, it badly needed this thing to happen so that people can come together, yeah. And you know, what a way to end off and what a way to start a new decade because uh, I I still think that. You know the fact that what we experience in Malaysian football today would not have happened if it wasn't for that moment. Because remember when we used to go and watch uh, the 2007 Asia Cup and all that, you know, <laughs> hardly, hardly anybody was interested, right? Yeah, and yeah. I, <laughs> but I guarantee you, if it happened today, if we were able to host the Asian Cup today, it would be a totally different story. All right, mm-hmm. and that, without question of a doubt, I think uh, you know every single Malaysia game will be a full. Back to the max. That's for sure. Mm-hmm. But you know, uh, yeah, Sivan. So just adding on to your point, I want to say like, what is it too? Mm-hmm. If fans are evolved, you know, mm-hmm. you want to watch the last uh, the national team nation playing. Mm-hmm. You can see they having ultras. They having. I remember they putting a big banner of this Thai yes. touching something. Even Indonesian fans, for matter, I think they. I think I would. I would term them as the Galatasaray kind of uh, environment they have. So I think in terms of fans. Yeah, equal to Europeans and South Africa, the passion. The yeah, yeah, so I totally agree. But, but then uh, the standard for me is still is still not there. I mean, maybe it's developing right now, thanks to few clubs like JDT or even Slango. Now it's looking back to their system back. Yeah, but I think it's time even for, for Southeast Asia team to move beyond this this this, this region. You know, so, you know I, mean? I think we forever be in this 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 situation, and then. 2010 glory. We were talking like 20 years, 30 years. I don't know, 40, 40 years. Like Thomas Cup, you know. <laughs> I dream, you know. Well, when the last one we were 36. Yep, yep, yep. And it still is a pipe dream. So I hope this won't be another Thomas Cup, like we find. Yeah, obviously, hopefully, we don't want that to happen as well, right? So oh, then we'll need to probably start a badminton podcast, guys. But okay, let's. <laughs> 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 yep. <laughs> okay. Yep. I mean, yep. I mean, that's that's pretty much about it for me. And uh, I guess you know, I don't know, guys. Uh, on a personal level, thank you to all our listeners. Thank you to all our followers. Yes. Uh, thank you for all the support. And uh, thank you to both of you guys, Bala and Elwin, for you know uh, for agreeing to be part of this new journey for all of us. Yep. Thank you. Thank you so much, guys. Yep. Yeah. Uh, thank you, guys. It's just uh, I think it's an interesting time for us as well. As well. So. Yep. <laughs> yep. Yep. Let's all look forward. And uh, let's hope the the pandemic uh, will be over soon. You know, we can start to enjoy things 
as as normal. May not be as what is before, but at least you know, let's let's hope that lives can get back together as normal. And with that said, everyone, first and foremost, happy New Year, 2021. In case uh, we don't able to wish you guys, and thank you for the support. Goodbye for now. Safi Rahim to come and take the impressive trophy that Sassi Kumra has had his hands on in the past. But now it moves from Vietnam to Malaysia. Safi Rahim picks up the trophy. Malaysia are the champions of the ASEAN region. Suzuki Cup 2010 champions are Malaysia.